Hey everybody, I hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to another video, and today we're going to be talking about cognitive dissonance theory. This theory predicts that when an individual has in mind two or more elements of knowledge that are both relevant to each other and important to the person, but are inconsistent with one another, this person will experience a state of psychological discomfort, otherwise referred to as dissonance. The theory is concerned with how perceptions and cognitions both influence and are influenced by motivations and emotions, and was first proposed by psychologist Leon Festinger in the mid-1950s. Now, let's take a moment to apply this theory to an everyday simple example. A smoker. Well, this smoker knows that smoking is bad. They know that smoking can cause a number of serious illnesses like cancer. However, their behavior is that, you know, they continue to smoke. And this contradiction is with their attitude towards smoking and their behavior of smoking is precisely what cognitive dissonance is. The cognitive dissonance theory does a good job explaining how people rationalize contradictory decisions and behaviors both in their own minds and to other people. The idea here is that after making a decision or performing a behavior, the person worries about whether or not it was the right decision or the right thing to do and will, will be motivated to take steps to reduce any resulting dissonance from that experience. The theory further suggests that we have this inner drive to hold all of our beliefs and behaviors and attitudes in harmony with one another and to avoid disharmony or dissonance. This, this principle is referred to as cognitive consistency. When this dissonance does occur between attitudes and behaviors, we must do something to change or to eliminate this dissonance. But what can we do to eliminate this dissonance? Well, there are four ways that we can achieve this. First, an individual can change their behavior. Going back to our example with the smoker, this person can quit smoking. Hey, they think smoking is bad. If I don't smoke anymore, well, the dissonance is gone. Well, that's not so likely for a smoker, but what they can do is cut back on the amount of cigarettes they smoke or take steps to start quitting. This way, they may not eliminate the dissonance altogether, but they will be reducing the, the dissonance that they experience because they're taking steps to achieve their attitude towards smoking. Second, an individual can change their beliefs. So a smoker might do this by finding research that says, hey, you know, smoking isn't necessarily as bad as people make it out to be. And maybe perhaps it doesn't necessarily cause the illnesses or diseases that people widely believe it to. This way, the individual will continue the behavior of smoking, but their attitudes towards smoking are more positive, and therefore the dissonance is reduced. Third, a person can justify their beliefs and behaviors by adding a thought. A smoker might do this by saying something like, well, you know, Tom smokes way more than I do, so at least I'm in a better boat than he is. Or they might say, you know, yes, I smoke and smoking is bad, but at least I exercise daily, I keep a really good diet, so at least I'm mitigating the harm and the negative effects of smoking by having a good diet and having good exercise habits. Finally, a person might reduce the importance of their beliefs and continue conducting the behavior anyway. So essentially this time, the person is really just ignoring the dissonance. They're saying, yeah, I know smoking is bad and I smoke, but what are you gonna do about it? You know, I like smoking and I'll just accept the negative consequences that come my way. So these are four ways that we can reduce the cognitive dissonance that we experience. This is so important if we want to, you know, feel good about ourselves and increase the level of well-being that we feel in our lives. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing for more psychology-related content every week. I really hope that you guys were able to learn something from this, and if you have any questions, please feel free to shoot them down below, and I'd be more than happy to answer them. 
Thanks again for watching, guys. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time.